it'll be a December like no other. This was Oxford Street earlier, less than a month till Christmas. Three days till England's lockdown is over. Two days until MPs vote on the tier system set to replace it. With almost everywhere to be in the top two tiers, there's talk, at least, of a backbench Tory revolt. We're going to the tiered approach. We want to stay out of lockdown properly, sustainably. So we take the tiered approach. That allows us to have these localised restrictions. Some people are complaining they're too tough, they're too restrictive, but we've heard the arguments in favour of public health for this. Having them at this level allows us to ease off when we're confident we can do so. Regional levels, of course, are already in place in Scotland, tougher than England's too. Compare Edinburgh, shopping allowed in the top but one tier, to shut down Glasgow in the very top tier, where the pigeons have the city's main shopping area largely to themselves. These weirdly empty shopping streets are a reminder that whatever the toughest restrictions in Scotland have been, Glasgow has been in them right since the start of September. And some Tory MPs in England are getting restless that their areas too may simply roll over from one set of restrictions to another, seemingly indefinitely. And each time, of course, we're told that these measures may just be temporary. And that is exactly the case the Prime Minister has made again today. Boris Johnson has appealed to Tory MPs in a letter, writing, these measures are necessary now, but they will not last forever. He told them the current regulations will have an expiry date of February 3rd. There'll need to be a vote in January to extend the measures until the end of March. And which tier and areas in will be reviewed, he said, every two weeks from mid-December. Labour says it may like the restrictions to go further and include more support. But it's never voted against a Covid public health measure, so the vote on Tuesday is expected to pass. We don't share the view of those Tory backbenchers that you can just let this virus rip through the population with the damage that that would do. But we want clarity from the government on two things. First of all, is this sufficient to get control of the virus? We're meeting the chief medical officer tomorrow afternoon to discuss that. And secondly, whether people will actually be able to comply with this. In lower tiered Aberdeen, at least, non-essential shops are open. And like Northern Ireland, where there's a two week circuit breaker, Wales gets further restrictions on Friday. Good morning and a very warm welcome to SNP Conference 2020. And as the SNP the logged on for its digital conference this weekend, an acknowledgement from its leader that across really the UK, too many people have died. Probably for the rest of my life, I will deeply regret uh, the number of people who've lost their lives in the face of this virus. I have done everything and will continue to do everything I can to try to control the virus, to keep it as uh, low as possible, to take the tough decisions mm. that have to be taken in order to achieve that and to try to take people uh, of Scotland along in these difficult uh, steps with me as far as I possibly can. When it comes to setting restrictions, though, has there been a rebellion elsewhere in the UK quite like the mooted Tory backlash in England? We have seen definitely dissent throughout this pandemic from different quarters, including politicians in Northern Ireland. Middlesbrough is an example. In Grampian and Aberdeen, uh, local leaders were unhappy with Scottish government measures. So there certainly have been examples, but I think this is perhaps a very prominent one. Um, and it's not helpful because I don't think it sends a good message to the public. Get this wrong, the Foreign Secretary warned today, and there's a risk of a third wave in January. We may still see a vaccine this side of Christmas. That is no guarantee of a happy new year. Thanks, Kieran. Well, earlier I spoke to Conservative MP Pauline Latham. Her mid-Derbyshire constituency was in Tier 2 before the lockdown, but will be put into Tier 3 next Tuesday. I began by asking her whether she would vote with or against the government on Tuesday. It depends really on what information we're given between now and then, because I don't think we've got the full facts in front of us. We're just told what the government wants us to do. And I'd like a few more facts. I'd like to know what the R rate is in my area, but also around the country. I'd like to know when that R rate went down, because I believe it's below one. And you're going into tier three, is that right, on Tuesday? Yes. Yes, we are, um, if it stays as it is. And before the lockdown, um, Derbyshire had volunteered to go into Tier 2. 
uh, reluctantly, but decided it probably was the best thing. So we went. We were going into tier two, and we went in for I think a day. Then lockdown came, and we've come out having done what we were told, and we're in tier three, which defies logic to me. But Polly Nathan, the fact is that thousands of people are getting infected every day. Hundreds of people are still dying. Michael Gove only yesterday told us and told you, I think, quite specifically, Tory MPs, you know, if we don't get this sorted out, if you don't vote for these restrictions, the NHS and its hospitals will be overwhelmed. So of is, he, course is I, he fibbing I or do you take him seriously? No, I don't want that to happen, clearly, and he obviously believes that. But where is the analysis? How do we... Um, you're right. Tens of thousands of people are getting COVID every week. But a small proportion of those, mainly elderly, are dying. Very few people under the age of 40 have died right from the beginning. So why are we making everybody go into a tier that they probably don't need to be in? But it's only for a month or perhaps two months, maybe even three months, and then it'll yes. be over. You know, the vaccines are on the horizon. It's going to be a miserable winter. There's no way around that. But there is a light at the end of this tunnel. Well, if the vaccine is coming as soon as we're promised, it, that third wave shouldn't happen. But what about the businesses that are suffering now, whether it's um, a hotel, whether it's a pub, whether it's um, a restaurant, they're all suffering. And I don't believe if it is six, nine, 12 weeks that many of those businesses will still be going. Would you like to see the government do a very clear and sober analysis of the economic costs of lockdown? Yes, I would, because we haven't had anything like that. I'd also like to see the projected figures, not the 4,000 a day that are going to die, because that was clearly wrong. I want to see proper statistics, proper forecasts that actually show some re reality in what is going on. Right, so in the same vein, would you like to see an economic analysis of the costs of a hard Brexit or no deal? Because the governor of the Bank of England has said, you know, a no-deal Brexit and even a hard Brexit will be more costly to the British economy than COVID. Well, let's see what the European Union come up with. We're not at the end of the road yet. They are still negotiating, but they haven't got many days left. And just one final brief one. If we were to loosen these restrictions, um, if they're watered down in the run-up to Christmas, as some people think they might be, Yes. And if then the wave comes back and we get many, many more people in hospitals and they are indeed overwhelmed, will you feel guilty? I will have made the decision on the best evidence that we have at the moment. I don't feel I have the best evidence. I, w I hope that doesn't happen and I would pray that that doesn't happen. What I'm saying is nobody needs to go out if they don't want to and they don't feel safe. But I would have voted, as I try to do all the time, whatever the decision, on the best evidence. And I don't feel we've got that at the moment. Pauline Nathan, thank you very much indeed.